Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for being here, both both of you. And um, I, I'm a freshman member of Congress. I'm, I'm new to all these things. I'm new to uh, learning about USAID and all, all, all the things that you do. And I can tell you, I've never been more frustrated in my life as when I was in Afghanistan. And we were asking a single question, a simple question to, to the USAID workers. How many projects have you started with the money that we spent? And how many projects have you completed? We spent about 45 minutes asking that question, and we couldn't get an answer. We couldn't get, the numbers were being thrown out. It was 70, it was 50. They didn't know how many projects they had started. So we told them that we wanted that information. We wanted to know how many projects had been started, how many projects had been completed, and we did receive uh, quite an extensive response. But we still didn't get the final information that we were asking for. How do you, how do you actually know that the project has been completed? Uh, we know when the start date was, we know when the eight date was, and we know how much money was spent. And one of the things that I was most, most frustrated about was that when we asked what were your results, the answer was the result was that we spent X amount of money. That's all they knew is how, money, how much money had been actually spent. And we're talking, this was the beginning of this year. So this is not something that was done under the prior administration. This, this is something that was recently, the beginning of this year. And they still didn't, you, you say that you've gone through a different process. I think you called it before they were using a, a process results and now you're using a different process. But at the beginning of the year, of this year, they still did not know how many projects and, and they didn't know how they, they could verify. Can, can you explain that to me, Mr. Shaw? Well, well, thank you for that point. I, I take very seriously your point about results. I think at the end of the day, we have to be able to articulate what we're getting for the resources we've spent. In Afghanistan, since 2002, for example, uh, there was a situation where there were 900,000 boys in school, no girls. Today, there are 7 million kids in school. 35 percent of them are girls, in large part because of programs we've put in place. And we can go into the next layer of detail to identify how many teachers we've trained and what the outcomes are related to that. In health, we've seen a 22 percent drop in infant mortality as a result of expanding a basic package of health services from uh, which we used to reach 9 percent of the population. Now it reaches 64 percent of the population. And it's been a longstanding USAID program with the Ministry of Public Health that has delivered that result. Um, in energy, which is a difficult sector, we've gone from 6 percent of Afghans with access to electricity to more than 14 percent today, including providing around the clock power in Kabul and including including providing enough technical assistance to the local electricity authority so that we've been able to double revenue collections on an annualized basis so that they have a sustainability plan for those efforts. It's, it, to me, it's very important that we can go sector by sector like that and document how much we're spending and what we're getting as results. And we do have systems that allow for that. I, I can't so so why, why wasn't that system in place uh, three months ago when well, I asked a simple you know, question? I and it's not like we just came yeah. you know, in the dead of night without yeah. any, any announcement that we were coming. They knew we were coming. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't have, uh, I don't know why. I mean, that's that's the kind of data that we collect on a regular basis, and we don't even have that information now. I, I still, we asked for those specific results, and they told us how much money they're spending. They told us when they started the project, and they told us when they ended the project. But we did not get to this point where you, they knew you were going to be testifying here. We still don't have that information. Hmm. Okay, well, I. I so I just shared some of that information. Yeah. I mean, we can do that sector by sector. This, I think what you're looking at is some version of this spreadsheet, Correct. which mm. is how we basically track projects and programs against strategic priorities. And we do that mission by mission. The reality is when, when we get a request with you know, a great deal of specificity around what's been sent, you know, it may or may not be this data pool that does it, and we have to construct something else. But, yeah. I, but I would just step back and validate your point that I think it is important that sector by sector we can describe a specific set of results uh, or aspirational results. And, um, and you know, and we, we should be able to do that. So I'm, I'm not sure who specifically you were speaking to in what context, but if they can't, but our education team is the one that tells me this, and we have our, our leader for the program sitting right behind me who talks to them on a weekly basis, and we do regular reviews so that we know we're on track. And a lot of times we're not on track, and then we make changes and course corrections uh, in that process. 
Thank you. My time is up. Um, Mr. Shaw, according to a recent memorandum from uh, Mr. Gambatesa, um, he stated that mon mon monitoring the progress of USAID programs in Afghanistan and Pakistan has become more and more difficult as funding is directed to the areas that are most insecure. In Pakistan, for example, much of USAID's assistance is directed to the federally administered tribal areas where USAID employees cannot travel. Audit work in Afghanistan and Pakistan has reported that the Office of, uh, of the Inspector General has reported that security conditions have either hindered program accomplishment or had the potential to create implementation problems. We actually made the same observation when we were there. We were told by, by the USAID uh, uh, workers there that, they, that we had a, a lot of difficulty going into those, those areas. Uh, to m conduct many of its audits, the IG's office will employ locally, locally owned contractors to conduct oversight. So the question to you is, um, do, do you agree with, your, with those assessments, and what specifically are you doing to fix this problem? Uh, well, thank you. I think when, when I started, I certainly felt that we needed to get out to see our projects in a more effective mm -hmm. manner. Um, there are two or three strategies we've deployed in Pakistan to accomplish that task. The first is we've worked on security to make sure that we have security as we go, but, but taking risks and getting out there. And in fact, we've had, even in Fatah and neighboring areas, more than 160 staff visits to sites and projects over the last six months. The second is we've built some mechanisms that use uh, third-party monitoring and evaluation personnel, mostly local but often very highly qualified engineers that can look at road projects and conduct a specific assessment or educational specialist that can go into a school and make a careful assessment of what's taking place. And we're increasingly getting more data and information from those types of partners uh, that are out there doing that. And then the third, as I mentioned previously, is to make sure in project design we're collecting baseline data against certain types of counterfactual situations so that we can say in a statistically validated and verified way that kids are learning more because of the following programs. In, in FATA and in some of the contested areas, uh, we use a mechanism called the uh, Office of Transition Initiatives that has been able to get out uh, and, and support quite a lot of activity from building roads to improving schools and uh, they actually are able to produce GIS maps that will document where their projects and programs are uh, in the community. And, and that's also been a very helpful strategy to accomplish that task. So do you visit the actual projects in, in those areas? Yes, our, our staff would, would visit those projects. And our Pakistani third party partners would also visit in a way that when they ha might have more time to conduct more careful assessments. How do you verify completion of the projects? Uh, we, we do visits. We rely on reporting from implementing partners. We rely on the third party evaluation mechanisms to uh, make those assessments as well. Yeah. Mr. Gambatisa, can, can you, do, do you agree with the statement that was just made by Mr. Shaw? And, and it just also, if you could please address to what extent has inadequate contract oversight or activities um, resulted in money lost to the American people? Well, um, as, as we have the same problem, obviously, in getting out to mm. in, the, in the FATA and some other regions um, to the north there, um, we have been able to get out into some areas like Sindh and Penj, um, Punjab and places south. Uh, and obviously, the agency has the same issue. We also use, as you mentioned in your, in your remarks, um, third parties, uh, other audit firms that will we'll hire local audit firms to go out and help us with our review of and, and doing our audit work. Um, uh, so I, you know, the administrator obviously is, um, is they are doing the same thing, basically. So I agree that you know, they are doing that. And the second part of your question was? Was, um, you know, to what extent has the inadequate contract oversight or activities management resulted in money lost to the American taxpayers? Uh, it's, it, it's difficult to quantify that. But um, obviously, without, without proper oversight, it is really difficult to determine that, uh, both our inability to get out there at some times and sometimes the agency's inability to get out there and verify. So it, it, to put a dollar value on it, I am not sure I could do that. I, I imagine we could probably come up with something like that. But um, as I said earlier, when, when we go out and do audit reports, uh, audit reviews, we are not looking at every program or every dollar of every program. We are taking a, a slice of it and we are actually looking at it at a, at a point in time. 
it, it's sort of a snapshot in time from when the program began to when it ended. So if it's a, a five-year program, it would, would not be very worthwhile for us to go look at it during the first year. We have to give it time to, to mature, and then we would look at it at a point in time. And, you know, as we were talking about the rubble earlier, well, we looked at it at a point in time where, where the rubble in Haiti was, was only 5 percent, and now, you know, the administrator says that's improved. Well, I, you know, I can't, you know, confirm or deny that because we haven't gone back and looked at it again. I'm, I'm certain if, he's, if that's what Dr. Shaw is saying, that's true. So, um, uh, it's to put a, an actual dollar value on that, I, I really don't, I can't do that. I don't think we can. Okay. Thank so you. Could, could I add uh, just a thought? I, I, look, I, when I joined, you know, the comment about the morgue that you made, I, I read that and Don and I had a conversation about it and I actually read it out loud to my senior staff and said, this is exactly why we're launching USAID Forward because we're not going to rely on these sort of process indicators that are reported in by the very partners that do the implementation. So when I say that in Pakistan we've reached 620,000 farmers through the flood relief efforts or that we've built 280 schools through our stabilization program in FATA and those areas, that's information that's coming in to us now from third party monitors. Now, it would be ideal to always have U.S. direct hires able to be out there assessing all of these specific things. Uh, but, but that is uh, not always possible, and we, are all, and we are pursuing this work because it's a core part of an integrated national security strategy, and, it's, uh, and we need to do it to help keep our country safe and to help, um, in some dangerous parts of the world, provide opportunities to people to have an alternative to a path that is threatening to us. And so, uh, so I just, I just want to say that because I think that's an important shift in how we think about monitoring, evaluation, and results reporting that's highly relevant to our reform agenda. Thank you. I